Thank you to my patrons, Ryan Deppin and Devin Morrison, for making this video possible. What's going on, YouTube? It's Castle Scoped, back with another video. Today, I'll be breaking down Tyler Hero, Miami's Hero. This is a project that I made on a live stream and continued just a little bit off stream, and it was uploaded to Patreon. Let's get right into this Photoshop artwork, and I'm going to start with the background. I decided that I wanted to have a uh, nice like nighttime type of sky and actually what actually helps a lot of times is starting with a black base because I can put the ground down and once I put the ground down and there's a black base it gives me a sense of okay so this is going to be a desaturated piece it's going to be at nighttime so there's going to be a little bit more blue so I'm going to have to desaturate it right so I hit that desaturation about the brightness down in the foreground because it's going to be darker because it's closer to the camera and the light sources in the back color balance to make it blue like that nighttime feel exposure on areas where I feel like see I put exposure on areas where I feel like it could be boosted with exposure so right where there already is a lot of shadow put a little bit more just to emphasize that brightness and contrast and I'm gonna bring all these other ones back they're all pretty similar to what I had shown you before but this is how the ground looked without the sky okay and you see this moon that is right here this is why I put a lot of those rim lights just with a brightness and contrast layer on the trim of the, the leaves. And when I'm doing the trim on the leaves, I'm just going in and being very careful with where I want to pick. And then another thing that I have that is available to everybody is the Concept Art Brush Pack. And I always go in here and find some nice little brushes that I can use to do detailing, detailing work. And always work on a layer mask. Black is going to hide. It's going to get rid of whatever is visible and white is going to reveal on the layer mask okay so always work with layer mask as you see right here so that was the moon the sky is here and you guys see the sky is actually covered that clouds covering the moon a little bit that's why it was a little bit erased and right off the bat everything just looks really like it's coming together when you have that nice background really focus on focus on your player treatment first i would say but the background is like the first thing that you should do once you go to the composition I added a lifeguard house in and just matched it, blended it in. Color balance, exposure, bring it down, bring the color fill down. And then I always do like exposure on the places that aren't going to get hit and I do it in this way. So I'll just take the polygonal lasso tool and I actually just block it out first. Okay, so I block out like, this is a big piece that is gonna not be hit by light. So I block it out in this way if we just turn this back on, I'll just delete it for example. So block it out in this way, just so I can see like, okay, boom, that's a big chunk and it actually looks more kind of like, kind of like cell shading, kind of like that comic feel that I like to go for. And it's in a big area that I can just use the properties panel. I can put some feather on it. And then from there, I can actually adjust even more. So I always bring my brush in white to reveal some more and go in in this way added some footsteps in these were sim pretty simple footsteps i did use a little bit of something called bevel and emboss so i use bevel and emboss reset to default so bevel and emboss makes the shapes have indents so even though that these were flat footprints see how i can change the depth in a bevel even though these even though that these were flat footprints I used the bevel and emboss to change the angle of the footprints and if you see you get a little bit of depth see how it looks like it's really like going into the sand there that's how I did that with bevel and emboss and then I also of course color balanced it so here is the boat that I wanted to put in added fire to that blended it all together a lot of these fire stocks are actually just PNGs so I didn't have to worry about putting them on screen if you just see Oh, this one actually is on screen, but there's a couple that are just PNGs and these are just from Envato Elements, but these will be included if you are a uh, part of the Patreon. I'll just link those as well. Tyler Hero, this is the back mask and this is where we start getting to the actual, the actual mask. Okay, so we'll go with the back mask first. So here's the Tyler Hero back mask and blended him in really well and took my time definitely took my time with this this took the longest part of the stream first i definitely went in and did my player treatment on him this was not even related to the project file in terms of the composition i always do player treatment first so i did my player treatment first right so brightness and contrast i brought some of the highlights up using the mask going on select 
color range, selecting a color range. So I'm selecting highlights. You can actually just select highlights. Then I would hit OK. And this would actually just make a mask of where his highlights were. And I'll just show you with a solid color, just so you can see how crazy you can get. Because as long as you have a mask, you can add any layer that you want. So say you want to add brightness and contrast, you add that, boom. And then you just blend it in with your layer mask like I showed you guys before. That's why I use there, brightness and contrast on the shadows as well. Selective color, just to get him at that nice tone, that nice like saturated tone. Brought a little bit more saturation to him. And then this is a dodge and burn layer. So all I do is shift that five, 50% gray. Put that layer on overlay. Once that layer is on overlay, you're gonna press, you can press O, or you can just go to the burn tool and just do dodge and burn. So burn is going to make him darker. I usually just put it on the shadow parts and dodge is going to make him brighter. So that's what brings a lot of dynamicism to your mask along with Topaz Labs if you have that. But if you don't have Topaz Labs, you can really do some great work, which is dodge and burn, select color range and uh, selective color. Then I also desaturated the jersey because it had that greenish tint and desaturating the jersey ugh, it looks so good when you just desaturate a jersey like it just completes the look. After that, blended him into the scene, of course. And I will just show it without the orange yet because I'll just add the fire. I'm not gonna do the other mask, I'll just show you guys the other mask. There was flares that were going around him with the fire just to make the fire look super cool. This is the fireball that I added, okay? So I added this fireball in, blended that with color balance and a little bit of curves as well. This is the original photo. Put it on screen and then added a little bit of a mask. So I just deleted some of those excess parts with the concept art brush pack that I showed you guys in the beginning. I found a nice textured brush that wouldn't take away too much of the flame detail. So it left a lot of the flame detail there, which is really good and really beneficial for the final product. Hue and saturation back over the top. This is the lighter hue and saturation, not the one that's as bright. This this one was as this one was super bright. And how you add hue and saturation is pretty simple. Just add a hue and saturation, put it on color eyes. Then you're just going to take the color to, take it to a high saturation, right? And then this would be the highlights one. So this is gonna be super bright, just like that. If you want, you can do blending options. So it's gonna be easier for you to blend with the layer mask. because It's gonna give you more of a map. So if you wanna blend for highlights, right click on the, the icon here blending options, and then you're going to take this down, right? And see how it's making a path. Now to separate this, you're gonna hold down Alt on the Windows. If you're on the Mac, I believe it is Option or Command. I always forget which one it is, my fault. But this is how you could make more of a map to where you're gonna put your highlights. Then what I do is I invert it. So I press Control I on the layer mask. And then after that, I go in and I take my time to just select places of highlights that the light's really gonna be hitting. So just really take your time with this. And you can always go back and change the blending options as well, like so. So then for the other one, I had just brought the, the, light, the light down, the lightness down more. It was still highly saturated, but just bringing the lightness down more. And that's gonna be your, your boost or your, your support. So see like these are the really, bright highlights, These, this is the support one. So I did the same thing for the other Tyler Hero mask, and then I also added the foot shadow in right there. Dodge over the top, so this is just a linear dodge layer, and this adds some, some highlights, right? So it adds a boost to it. Well, usually I just add a solid color layer. I put it towards a color that is on there. So let's just go like orange, then I change it to linear dodge, invert the mask, and then with the white paint on where you see you want boost and then paint black where you don't want boost. So that's how you would do that right there. Add a little bit of like social network diagram beams. You can barely see these, but I think they were a cool, a cool addition. A palm tree in the front blurred just to give you guys a little bit more depth. This text is, text name is called Need for Speed. So this is the Need for Speed font. And this font is called Bodini MT. So you guys can find these on the internet and just download those. CCs, lens flare, 
added a gradient map i just add random gradient maps sometimes and see what works i just go sometimes i go in the iridescent part and i just pick an iridescent linear i'll just pick an iridescent gradient map and then i like change the blending mode i actually learned this from ct graphics so if you guys don't know ct check them out i actually learned this from him selective color color lookups that i have you guys have access to the color lookup video I still use the same color lookups from that video like three years ago now. Calciscope watermark, and then of course the camera raw. So let's just go in camera raw to wrap this up. Camera raw filter, put on modern four. My favorite, you guys, a lot of people don't know about this profile actually here on camera raw. So definitely go to profile and then go browse. And there's so many different looks that you can go for or pick from um, in camera. Raw. And uh, they're all, not all of them, but they look so good. like. It just really brings everything together really well. Added some sharpening, gotta add some grain. That's my thing. It just makes it look like industry standard, super professional. Played around with the shadows and highlights a little bit and calibration just to bring the colors in balance even more. Value check, I always have this at the top so I can check my values and make sure that my grayscale is looking right. What I mean by grayscale is just the values by themselves and looking at just light values everywhere where light is hitting and seeing if I should add more light on different places or not. Does it look good? I appreciate you guys checking out this project file and video. I had a lot of fun making it. Consider becoming a Patreon. You guys get access to live stream playbacks, project files like this one, texture packs, and more. It's been Calciscope, the artist of athletes. Make sure you guys hit that like button, share with a friend, and consider subscribing to the channel. The more the merrier. Till the next video, I'll catch you guys. Peace.